delighted to be studying such an important message. It has to do with angels who are the messengers of God. If you do not have such a teaching syllabus, I really hope that you will, by all means, get one in a hurry. And if you're in the class or even studying with us at home, we left the left side of the sheet open, uh, not, not, not for expansion of, the, of it, but for you to study, to study from it. Now, I believe if you don't have a proper relationship, say relationship, that, that you will not be able to participate with these supernatural phenomena called angels. So uh, the reason we're teaching is to bring in the relationship so that we will know precisely uh, our relationship with God and our relationship uh, one, one with another. So if you will turn over to, to page uh, 31 in your teaching uh, syllabi, we're studying relation to what? Do angels do created created persons? What do they what do they do? And uh, we we were studying this in our in our in our last uh, lesson, and uh, which was very very exciting. And we would like for you to all by all means get the entire lesson. Our last point that we brought to you was that. Angels were those who informed believers of things going to happen and, and things pertinent to their lives and to possibly to, to, to destiny. And so uh, at the bottom of page uh, 31, it says angels escort believers to heaven uh, after, after they have completed their lifespan on, on planet Earth here. And uh, we have uh, ample ample, uh, uh, not only of them escorting them to heaven information, but we have Moses, I mean, uh, uh, over the body of Moses, we have uh, Michael fighting Satan over the bones of Moses. So evidently, just because you die, don't stop the fireworks. Uh, the, the devil don't want to ever cease. He'll either fight you over a dry bone when the spirit and the soul are, are, are gone from it. Uh, we read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 22, and it came to pass that, uh, that the beggar died and was carried by the angels, by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And so uh, we have a record here of an escort when we leave this world that we go to live with God forever and angels assist us there and and your next one is his angels uh, deliver God's judgment to the ungodly uh, we find that all through the word of God right down through the book of Revelation and uh, and so it, it would take an entire lesson just for that one point um, all we want to do is identify the the, the work that angels are doing uh, but uh, uh, if we were to to go into it, let's look at one in the Old Testament here, in Second Kings chapter six, verse seventeen. Elisha prayed and said, "Lord, I, I, I pray, open the eyes that this he may see." That was his assistant, and, and and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and and he and and he saw and beheld the angel. The the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. And so we, we have the angelic host supporting and helping and, 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 and keeping. And, uh, and they were the ones that brought judgment upon that entire army. They struck them blind and led them away as blind men. And, and so uh, it's, it's a full armor. Now the, the biggest thing I'd like to teach you is that he who was our God is, and that he will be, that he did not do something then that he could not do now. But it's very likely we're not in that word I was giving you to begin with, that relationship that he could see like Elisha saw. It's most uh, remarkable to me that Elisha had a hard time with his assistants. One of them was a thief, and he had to die with leprosy. And then here he got him another one. He didn't, he didn't believe. 
He, 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 he was a young man without faith. It's, it's not easy to, to choose successors. And, and oftentimes we want to choose the successors. Say, hey, now you go ahead and, and do as I am doing. And then they don't do it, you see. Because we never hear of this young man again. <clears throat> He was not a successor to Elisha, and, and, and so uh, possibly that unbelief never did leave him, that he wasn't capable of doing that. I, I think that uh, Reverend Howard Carter from London, England, uh, looked at me several times and wondered if I was ever going to be able, not, not only just to do something for God, but to follow him. Uh, and I, 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 I heard a kind of a scolding voice once in a while as if he was saying, you're going to make it or not? You're going to come up into this area of understanding the supernatural, or you're not going to make it? And uh, in his later years, he was so very proud that we had, we had made it, that we entered into, into an area of, of the supernatural and of the power of God, and it fulfilled him. And I, I'm sure that he felt like he had developed a young man uh, that that could do what he was doing. And that is success, you know, that, that is success. When you produce someone that can take the thing higher than you took it, uh, then that's what we should do. Every generation should improve, but we don't, we degenerate, you know. One generation has less than the other one had for the simple reason it refuses to go forward with the truth that they have. So God help us to... <laughs> And, and, of course, this is the final generation right now. If we don't do it, it'll, it'll never get done. We're t coming to the climaxing of all things. And, and therefore, if we don't do it now, we are that final generation. You say, well, well, then should we be preparing young men, prepare them better, encourage them more? There are many young men, uh, spiritual leaders, that would do a lot better if they had a little encouragement from older ones. But if older ones are going to sit on them and push them down, then they then and criticize them. Maybe you do not know how I evaluate people, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll give you an idea of how I evaluate people. We'll say my son is 16 years old and he makes a decision, and it's a awful decision he's made. Rather than beating him on the head, I just go and sit down for a moment. I said, now let let the wheels turn backward. And I go back to when I was 16, and I said, now let me see now, what kind of decision would I have made at 16? I turn around and pat him on the back and say, man, you sure did good. I wish I could have done that good when I was 16. But I was so stupid at 16, I couldn't have done that. I was, I was living for the devil and dying of tuberculosis. I had really had something big going, death. And, and, and so uh, uh, if, if you, rather than correcting your kids as if they should know as much as you know at 40, then you're unfair with them. Uh, turn the wheels back to their age and see how you would have done and what you would have decided. And immediately you come up with some truth, saying, well, he's not doing bad for his age. And I think it's nice to use the, that little phrase, his age, you know, uh, because you expect him to improve with, with, with the knowledge around about him. But angels do deliver God's judgment. And in the, your next one, it says, angels help find a bride for Isaac and Rebecca. That is a remarkable situation. We have the scriptures right there for you to read. Uh, now that's getting down to uh, home life, isn't it? Uh, some of you girls would like to put some angels to work and says, hey here, you boys get moving. You're moving just a little slow on this. Uh, but uh, the, the heavenly creatures have an interest in our joy and in our success, and, and, and things that you may not think the angels are helping in. Take with my life, why could I arrive in a country like Argentina uh, on the day they were having a wedding? And all the missionaries of the whole country were gathered in one place. I met them all at one shot, you know? And I didn't know that until after I got in town. When I got there and, and, and saw the festivities, I thought they were giving me a welcome. <laughs> I soon found out I had nothing to do with it at all. Uh, it was the young people were getting married. Uh, but my wife was at that wedding, you see, and I found her at a, at, a wedding, at a wedding ceremony. So it may be that angels are having a lot more to do with our lives than we recognize. 
And so maybe we should look a little closer to say who brought who from where uh, at, at the right time, at the right time, both in the lifespan. I was I was shooting at 32 years of age here, and 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 so they came in uh, at the right time. You you might think it was a natural normal thing, and it may not have been. It may have been a supernatural thing. Uh, then we come to the New Testament, which is more exciting for us. An angel rolled away this stone on the resurrection day. Can you imagine a God sending an angel down? And he rolled away the stone. It took 8, 10, 12, 14, uh, 16 Roman soldiers to put the stone there, roll it there. It was uh, heavy. It took an angel, uh, not only by himself, but just, just his little finger, you know, and uh, roll the stone away. I would very much like for the angels to start doing my work for me because they can do it so much easier and likely so much better. It'd be, it'd be good if they'd just do some of it. How many would like for the angels to do your work for you? Amen. And, and so, uh, but they did do it. And if they did do it, they can do it. And so that, that's, the, that's the whole thing that we have to live with. And our next one, it says, an angel uh, shut the mouth of lions uh, not a lion in the, in the whole empire of Babylon could touch Daniel uh, not because of Daniel but Daniel confessed the next morning that God had sent an angel give him the lock jaw not one of them could open his mouth all night long and that was good because they have to open their mouth to yawn, no yawning they have to open their mouth to give those loud and hideous noises and so there were no noises so everybody could sleep well that night uh, but Daniel said that God had sent an angel down and, and had uh, closed the mouth of those creatures that they could not hurt him. And so therefore, uh, angels were protecting, protecting, protecting. I often look back at my own personal life and, and I see things that, uh, that if God had not have protected, I, I, couldn't, have, I couldn't have been here at all. I was in a place once, and I went to make a step, and there was a rattler in his round thing to about that high with his head uh, out that way and his tail rattling. I never jumped so far in my life at one shot because that thing was ready to strike. And uh, you, you look back upon it, we may not realize it, we look back upon it, an angel might have just stopped him right there put a piece of glass between him and me and said, just a moment, you don't strike this one. Yeah, I, I won't permit that. But it might be that you and I have had the visitation of angels and didn't realize it nor recognize it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, you just, maybe says, oh, it just happened. And maybe with our cars that we drive, uh, it, it could be that, that we've had angels with us and didn't know it. And some of them should have had angels with them, and they're not here anymore. And, and so uh, uh, if you recognize these things, and, and if you're willing to study them, and willing to improve upon them, then you're getting closer to them. But I'm afraid that in our nation today, we're so busy with the things that are natural and the things that belong to this world, we don't have time even to contemplate. We don't even have time to contemplate the, the, the awesomeness of, of God's revealing the, the, the creatures that are round about us. You say, but I can't see them. Who said you had to see them? Uh, they, they, can, they can do their work, and they live in another world from what you and I live in. They are creatures that are supernatural, and, and they, they, can, they can walk on... They can walk on air rather than land. And so it, it, it might be that because our carnality, which means our natural person, uh, that it is so strong that anything that don't match that, uh, we don't go along with it. And this might be completely wrong. So even though we can't see it, even though we can't hear it, let's believe in it. In Jesus' name. All right. Uh, an angel was sent into the furnace a fire in Babylon and uh, everybody saw that one the king saw it many others saw it and he said who is that fourth person when I only put three in there 
<laughs> that was a scared king, I want you to know. How did they multiply? The men that threw the men fell down dead from the heat, and here they are dancing and praising, and I, one of them had his tambourine with him, and they were praising and magnifying God in the midst of a furnace that had been heated seven times hotter than usual. I don't know who were doing the measurements at that time, uh, but he says heated up seven times hotter um, than, than ever before. And so uh, when they came out of there, uh, the fire had not even singed them. Their hair was still there, just in place. The clothes were, were still as they were. And, and so God put something around about them and he had an angel in there with them, uh, securing them in, into the fiery furnace. So you see, that, that tale's too far out. I imagine all of this is too far out. And that's the reason America will be lacking in this, and countries like in Africa and others will be seeing these things. Uh, they will be enjoying these remarkable manifestations, and we'll say, why didn't God do it here? Uh, God does not seek to bless unbelievers. When you don't believe, you don't receive. And so, if you're going to eliminate what God is capable of doing, but you don't have to eliminate it. It says the nation should be turned into hell. Uh, I mean, the heat, the wicked should be turned into hell. Well, the nations that forget God. All you've got to do is to forget God to make it to the wrong place. And we are, are a nation that have, has forgotten God. When I was a little boy, very, very often, uh, women... Women would get on a, a train and, and they'd travel into Washington, D.C. And you say, what's she going in there for? Well, she had a son in Congress and she went to beat the daylights out of him. <laughs> so you're not voting right back here, boy. My prayers brought you here. Now let's get to voting straight. We had Christian mothers backing up. Well, well if they've got any Christian mothers, they don't let them get up front. I can tell you that now. They let the whores and the whoremongers and all that nasty bunch out in front, but they, they sure don't want any godly people raising their hands and praising God out in front. And, and so uh, uh, we had a different generation. We are a nation that has forgotten who God is, the greatness and the majesty of our God. I want to know him. And all the people said, yeah. Okay. Um, in, the, in the middle of page uh, 33, it says, angels appear incognito uh, that is they appear and people don't know them and hebrews uh, 13 and 2 uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers now i wouldn't want to go into that part of it because it would take an entire lesson right there uh, i have met so many people in my lifetime that have been that that, that have met with, with strangers even in car accidents uh, I think I was reading just a few days ago that a car had turned over and three or four people couldn't straighten it up. And one man stopped and pushed the thing right back in place and left. And they couldn't, nobody could find him. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, we, we are, we, we do have this supplement for our lives if, if we can register for it. Put your name down. Hey, Lord, I'm in line for this thing. Or if you're going to worry about this and worry about that and worry about the other, you're just a little worrier, that's all. You're not going to make it through to the dominion we're talking about today. But let's not only talk about it, let's pray about it every day. Are you here? Let's move into God on it. Let's crave for it, desire for it. You certainly will not receive the supernatural uh, when you're so overwhelmed with that which that which is natural. You'll have to study a, a, a great number of these before, uh, because even for that we have a whole half page of uh, scriptures for you. And now we have one that all of us love, and that's angels assist us with our children. In Matthew uh, 18 and 10 it says, Take heed that ye, uh, that ye uh, despise not one of these little ones, for, uh, for I say unto you that that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father uh, which is in, in the heaven. And, and so uh, these children have angelic assistance. I don't think any boy would ever make it to ten if he didn't have a few angels. <laughs> he, he, he looks for trouble all day long. He's a trouble looker. 
and 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 if he survives, he, he needs several angels to help him. To your mothers know that better than anybody else. Uh, but we'd like, like for you to study that, and and I, I'm sure that you will enjoy. And in the middle of page uh, 34, angels direct evangelists. Now, to me, that was very very uh, very significant. That Philip. Philip was going about his business preaching, and an angel spoke to him. And this is in Acts 8, 26. Angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south. Isn't that something? I couldn't, I couldn't blame the angel this morning for telling everybody to go south. Uh, to go toward the south, enter the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza. That, that's what you call the, the ocean road down there. Uh, it runs along beside the sea. If you go, you go directly west, or you hit the Mediterranean, and then you take the ocean route down into Egypt. And and uh, if he was precisely from Ethiopia, uh, then he should have taken another road down 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 on the other side to come down on the other uh, and a different in a different area of the Red Sea down there. But uh, he, God knew which way he was going. And, and he, uh, he was an Ethiopian, so uh, he was, should have been on his way to Ethiopia. But if he took the river, I mean the ocean road, he would for sure land in the middle of Egypt. Maybe he wanted to, and to go from there home. Uh, but, but here, an angel of the Lord directed Philip, told him where the angel was, uh, where the man was, brought him, brought him to the man, got him saved, uh, baptized him in water, and sent him on his way, rejoicing. And I'm sure speaking in a, in a heavenly language. And all the people said, an angel uh, causes water to heal. He, he, he healed the, the, the poison water. Uh, you find that in, in John uh, 5 and 8. An angel helped to keep the, uh, helped to reap the final harvest. Now that, that's in Matthew uh, 13, 39. The reapers, the Lord Jesus says, are the angels. The harvest is immortal souls. I wouldn't be a bit surprised in places like Africa today, the angels of God are helping them with that great harvest that they're having over there because they would not know how to contain it. How can a young man that, uh, that uh, uh, was an attorney, a lawyer, suddenly get saved full of the Holy Ghost and in four years' time have over 5,000 people and that place was so well organized until I was amazed when I was there a few weeks ago. Uh, you, you certainly need some angels for that. And uh, he went right in there. They own, they own property. The, the, there are people that hang around these places for the 40 and 50 years and never own a piece of property. It's very expensive. And, and uh, I think they're angels. The, the piece of property we, we have in Manila did, did you know it was all boarded up and you couldn't see it? It was all boarded. You couldn't even you couldn't see it. It had big boards all the way around it. And I was in in the office of an attorney one morning, just talking to him about a piece of land. Another man walked by and says, "Is it a piece of land you're talking about?" Yeah. He, he skipped out a name, says, and, and an address. Says, "You go there and they'll tell you how to find a piece of land." Went over there, put me in his car, and took me right over to the place that was all boarded up. At the most important place in the whole city, uh, right in the heart of the city, two blocks from the government offices, three blocks from the national post office uh, that handles the post office of the whole nation, and there we had our property. Now, now, if we'd had our spiritual eyesight open a little clearer, we might have seen some beautiful creatures doing that for us. Because when we bought that piece of property for $25,000, it happens to be worth several million right now. See, I was there just after the war, and, and so uh, sometimes we, we get things that we just don't hardly know how we got them. We just know we have them. And can you say amen? In the Great Tribulation, it, it is the angels that, that will bring in the harvest of God in the last days. And so uh, we wish to be part of that. And so we have the story of what angels do. And, and it's an introductory situation. In our next lesson, uh, we will be teaching on why angels, uh, why does God use angels rather than using human persons? 
and it's going to be very exciting. Study, the, study them in advance if you wish. Uh, but the main thing is, we are studying supernatural creatures. We are terrestrial creatures. We are studying celestial creatures. And, and we believe that they have a lot to teach us, and we're going to move in on it. And all the people said...